There is this gap between an image and experiencing something in that image. There is that clear, vibrant difference between the two. And the film or anime that made me feel this way and really gave me a sense of this gap is Summit of the Gods. The stark difference between the popular image of climbing Mount Everest and the stark realities of the climb itself and that journey to the top is clear only when you're presented with something like this film. It's easy to romanticize the trip as a statement about challenging human limitations and conquering nature. You feel a sense of power, a sense of heroism, and you're not wrong for thinking that way. You feel that you can do anything you want, but this film, Summit of the Gods, breaks that dream into tiny little pieces. There's nothing romantic about the actual process, which typically involves paying huge sums of money and wading through rems of red tape in order to spend an average of just two months on a brutal climb with low chance of success. The summit is typically only reachable for a few weeks or even days each year due to the harsh weather, and many expeditions have to be aborted short of that final climb. And even today, it's surprisingly common for climbers to die on Everest, and we've seen this happen time and time again, and it should not come to a surprise. The beautiful animated film The Summit of the Gods based on Jiro Tanaguchi's manga doesn't try to sell the romantic journey of climbing Everest or portray the dream of reaching the top as heroic or glamorous. Patrick Ember, the director, chooses to focus on the details of the journey and the drive that would lead people to risk their lives, and not just for a quick thrill, but for an exhausting and isolative trip. Embert's film, now streaming on Netflix, acknowledges that there's a kind of nobility in pursuing a cause such as this, regardless of the cost and what may be at risk. Do whatever it takes, even if you risk your life. But he portrays that pursuit in a somber, thoughtful way, without glossing over how closely it resembles madness and insanity. In simple words, this story is trying to reconstruct a man's life by talking to his former friends, peers, and partners, reconstructing the threads of his history in order to understand him better. But the journalist Fukumachi Makoto isn't trying to paint a portrait of a dead man. He's trying to track down a living one. Working as a magazine photographer, he heads up to Everest to take pictures of a Japanese expedition in progress. When they prepare poorly and run behind schedule, it should not come to a surprise that they were forced to turn back immediately and leaving him without the photos he needed for this assignment. Returning to his editor to complain, Fukamuchi briefly cites a man he believes is Habu Joji, a once famous climber who disappeared years ago, but he's holding a camera he believes might have belonged to George Mallory, an explorer who disappeared on Everest in 1924. The mystery of whether Mallory and his climbing partner Andrew Irvine reached the top of Everest is still unknown. 29 years before the first recorded summit still haunts the climbing world, and Fukumachi hopes the camera will hold those answers. When Fukumuchi can't track Habu down, he retraces the man's steps from his childhood to his days as the prickly outlier in a Japanese climbing club, to his solo career attempting startling and record-breaking feats in an attempt to make a name for himself and earn the acclaim and sponsorships that will make him take on greater trials. It's clear that Habu was driven by both a powerful obsession with pushing the limits of what was possible for climbers like him and by an equally powerful determination to walk on this path alone, pushing everyone away. There's a powerful sense of melancholy to the summit of the gods, somewhat similar to the melancholy and sense of alienation in otherwise French films, because, holy shit, there is a lot that I... It, it's just really brutal. There's a lot of French films that are just sad and depressing, and some of the gods can be lumped in there. Anyway. Fukumachi ends up finding Habu. He's just as obsessive as him, and just as prone to leaving other people behind as he pursues his fixation. It's clear that both men are alike, even if their goals are completely different. 
both of them clearly see the barriers in front of them and can find it within themselves to turn away from the chase and live normal lives, no matter how unsatisfying each new achievement becomes in turn. The stakes are absolutely high and realism driven action. Embert makes sure the audience feels every misstep, every crumbling foothold and loose shoe, every trembling and overtaxed muscle or a rope that could easily break. When climbers do face Everest, viewers who've seen photos of the ice walls and base camps may be surprised at the level of specificity in this film and the small details. This in itself is a brutal journey. Climbing a mountain is literally no joke. For most of us, this intimate hands-on look at the mechanics of mountaineering is the closest we're likely to get to the highest point on the planet. That sense of going along a climber's journey is the primary attraction to Summit of the Gods, which keeps its other pleasures measured and minimal. The character animation is simple, the backgrounds often shooting for a simplified and oddly mildly stylized photorealism. There's none of the energy or visual play that animation does so well. It isn't quite rotoscoping, because that is not a really good word for it. But there's a sense of reality that most animated films in the West lack. However, where the film lacks speed or sense of play, it instead brings a form of awe, both at the scale of Habu's endeavors and at the clear danger he's braving on his quest to reach the top of his field and top of the world. He has his shares of victories, but they all come across with costs and losses. The sense that there's always going to be another mountain ahead layers a heavy sense of misfortune over the story. The Summit of the Gods isn't a joyous film. It does feel like a remarkably insightful meditation, both about what it would really be like to fight your way up to the top of Mount Everest, and why people keep taking up these challenges, and why they would risk their life. No one had ever conquered Everest from the southwest face. In 1985, Hase, a climber, tried, but he didn't succeed. Hence, Habu decided to complete the expedition to leave a legacy behind. There's that obsession. He was going to tackle it alone, without oxygen, and Fukumachi accompanied him. When a devastating storm hit the mountains, Habu saved the journalist's life and requested that he should retreat. While Fukumachi turned back to the valley, Habu continued his hustle. A shot depicted that Habu reached the summit but lost his life while returning. Habu left Mallory's camera for Fukumachi to finish his article and understand what drives a climber to take deadly mountaineering expeditions. In the end of this beautiful movie, and probably my most favorite film of this year, Fukumachi developed the film and got the answer he wanted. Done, right? Well, no. This wasn't enough to satisfy his curiosity, hence he embarked on a journey to the mountain to find the answers himself. And when he reached that summit, in his heart, he got the same feeling that Habu hunted throughout his life. Habu explained in his note and that climbing made him feel alive, and it was the only feeling he wanted. The only thing he wanted. Throughout Habu's journey and tragic life, Fukumachi understood the passion behind the climber's pursuit to find new challenges in his quest. Once a mountaineer conquered a summit, he had no more goals left to pursue. Literally nothing. Absolutely nothing. If he doesn't look for a new horizon or a more difficult path, he would be no better than a dead man. Hence, he kept himself engaged with new challenges like climbing alone, taking a difficult route, or reaching the summit without oxygen. To make themselves feel alive, they never let the hustle end. This is something you have to watch again and again to really understand it. And yes, it's worth all your time. Thank you.